Hello all you absolute legends, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the History Buff, I'm John, and this is another meeting that should have been an email. Uh, today, I'm putting myself on the spot, so guys, be gentle with the lube. Uh, this is the history of Britain. In 20 minutes, let's see if we can get through this. I gotta tell you, I, oh man, you know how bad I am at this stuff, and I'll probably misspeak a million times, but if you got this far, don't forget, Please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Try to keep it nice, uh, if it's at all possible. Uh, let's get going. The United Kingdom is a nation located in the British Isles, made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. <laughs> They'd give us a nice break there, I guess. <laughs> Thousands of years ago, the Isles were inhabited by long forgotten pre Celtic people, known as the Beacon. That must have been, by the way, for Americans to let it sink in. Culture. Named for their distinctive pottery beakers. Oh, Little I didn't know is that. known of them, but it has been suggested that these people laid the foundations for the mysterious Stonehenge. A okay. series of heavy standing stones which were transported from 150 miles away and arranged to form a calendar, marking the days of the summer and winter solstice. Thank you! It's like nobody understands how important the winter and summer solstices were. But yes, that's that's my understanding, and I'm sticking to that. You can find those also in in the U.S. A lot of Native American uh, tribes have done that too. Over time, waves of Celtic-speaking people arrived from the European continent, who soon came to form the Britonic, Gaelic, and Pictish people. Okay, I'm with you so far. I did know this. These people were not a unified people, mm -hmm. but were rather many tribes who shared a similar pagan religion, language, and culture. Right. The Romans invaded, conquering what's now England and Wales, but failed to conquer the Pictish tribes to the north. Mm -hmm. The Romans launched several campaigns into this land they called Caledonia. However, their fortifications were soon overrun and abandoned, and they retreated to Hadrian's Wall. Yep. Their conquered lands were incorporated. In it's interesting because a lot, you know, I, studying the Romans, I learned that you know a lot of the major cities' foundations were started. Uh, what was it? London was like Lundium or something like that. Um, a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff. ...into the Roman Empire, becoming the province of Britannia. Britannia. They brought Roman customs and laws, improved infrastructure, and connected many towns and cities with Roman roads. Okay. All right. So it's it's really clear that the foundation for uh, the island, the islands, Great Britain, or the UK, I guess you'd call it, uh, was uh, pretty much set in stone. No pun intended. I was hoping to use that. <laughs> when the Romans left, there was a great migration of Germanic tribes. These were the Jutes, Angles, and Saxons, with their language Old English. Their settlement pushed many Britons to areas in Wales, Brittany, and a kingdom known as Dumnonia, while Scotland eventually evolved into four kingdoms. The smallest of these were the Scots, who were originally from Ireland, the Britons of Strathclyde, the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Bernicia, and the Picts of Alba. Okay, he knew about... For unknown reasons, the Jews the disappeared Ireland from history, part. but the Angles and Saxons eventually formed seven kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Wessex, Sussex, Kent, Essex, East Anglia, Mercia, and Bernicia became Northumbria. After the collapse of Dumnonia, the remaining territory of Cornwall fought against the powerful Kingdom of Wessex. Cornwall eventually right. fell under the control of Wessex, but it managed to keep its own culture. Wales at this point was also made up of several separate kingdoms. The I gotta say, on the Wales point, um, I know you guys make fun of Welsh, and Sir Welsh jokes here, but uh, all things, my understanding, and this is my limited American, American English understanding, uh, is that, um, uh, that Wales was... It, it, in 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 all this creation was i don't want to say largely untouched but maintained somewhat of its own uh i don't want to say autonomy either but their own culture speaking uh all all this other um things it's it's intact it's it's rarely i shouldn't say rarely but it's just it's not affected the way the rest of the island is the largest being Gwynedd in the north Powys in the east and Dufford to the south the British Isles soon saw numerous Norse raiders from Scandinavia. 
These were the Vikings, and they began settlement on many of the Scottish Isles, the Isle of Man, and they even founded the city of Dublin in Ireland. Oh, I didn't know that. I had no idea they founded Dublin. I mean, it makes sense, but okay. A long way to go on those. On those ships. The Scots and the Picts then decided to unite under Kenneth MacAlpine to form the Kingdom of Alba. Oh. The Kingdom of Alba grew strong over the years, and eventually Strathclyde was brought into the fold. Meanwhile, Danish Vikings arrived in the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms for conquest. After okay. fighting the King of Wessex, Alfred the Great, the Dane Law was formed, a land where the laws of the Danes held influence over the Anglo-Saxons, controlling the region and its affairs. Interesting. The Anglo-Saxons eventually defeated the last Viking king of York, Eric Bloodaxe, and Athelstan became the first king of the English. Really? Af what is it, Athelstan? All right, and that's 927. Okay, all right, so we are a little, little under halfway to modern times. At, well, all right, we're, we're, yeah, it's becoming a, an entity this is what this is 400 years uh maybe four 450 years after the fall of R the roman empire so uh i can understand this whenever whenever somebody leaves there's a power vacuum so this makes total sense although the newly formed kingdom of denmark would conquer england and even found a short-lived danish dynasty under canute i always found it weird that the danes had uh like had so much influence uh, in the world. I mean, I, I always thought of it as, you know, of course, just a small group of people, but their amount of, the amount of, um, uh, influence that they had had, uh, so has always surprised me. The Norsemen had a dramatic impact on the Isles, so it's no wonder some words in the English language have Norse origin. After defeating formidable sea raiders from Ireland, <laughs> the Western Isles, Scandinavia, and Anglo-Saxon forces from Mercia, Griffith at Llewellyn subdued his rivals in southwest Wales. Llewellyn became the only Welsh king ever to rule over the entire territory of Wales. I he didn't was know defeated that. Llewellyn. by the English Earl Harold Godwinson and killed by his own men, leading to the Welsh kingdoms splitting apart once more. At the okay. death of Edward the Confessor, there was a succession dispute between four claimants. Harold Godwinson was elected as king and managed to defend England from an invasion by the Norwegian king Harald Hardrada. Mm -hmm. the two Harald, However, yep. Harald had to march his army south to defend against Duke William of Normandy, yep. who had crossed the English Channel. According to tradition, at the Battle of Hastings, Harald was killed by an arrow to the eye, and the Norman invaders were victorious. The new King William defeated a number of rebellions, built a new design of castles called Moat and Baileys, and introduced a number of reforms. Like so this is where my, again, my understanding, <clears throat> excuse me, my understanding, and this is my American understanding, so you know it's probably flawed. A lot of castles are being built at this time. Um, but I also understand that there were a lot of fortified cities against the Norse raiders before this. So I'm guessing the larger castles that we see these days when, we, when you see tourists going and, you know, taking walks through the castle and all this other stuff and asking dumb questions, um, that that's the result of, of this. A trial by combat and the Doomsday Book. The Norman dynasty invaded into South Wales and yep. parts of Ireland, creating the Lordship of Ireland. At court, nobles spoke and conducted sessions in the Anglo-Norman language, which endured for centuries and left an incredible mark in development of modern English. After a brief civil war, Henry II would marry Eleanor of Aquitaine, establishing the Angevin Empire, beginning a long rivalry against France. Mm -hmm. Richard the Lionheart and it still goes today. Just check the comment section of the last uh, video I did. Defended much of this territory and also became a central Christian commander during the Third Crusade, achieving considerable victories against his Muslim counterpart, Saladin. Yes. Uh, oh, and by the way, that video that I just referred to might be out of order. Under King John, heavy taxes were imposed on his barons in order to pay for his expensive foreign mm -hmm. wars. All right. Now, this is this is the... Uh... In the, in the States, people, the United States, uh, let me start again. Americans uh, would know this as the Robin Hood time period. Um, and, uh, you know, while they, uh, while, while, while King Richard's away, you know, this kind of thing happens. But that's, that's like 
that's the the true basic understanding that Americans do have, and uh, it's it's largely based on uh, Robin Hood. Believe it or not, it's true. The barons rebelled and forced John to sign the Magna Carta. There you are. A charter that established the principle that everyone was subject to the law, even the king, guaranteeing the rights of individuals, the right to justice, and the right to a fair trial. Also showing that you can only push people so far until they push back. Which, I don't know. We'll still see. Most of North Wales remained independent. Magna Carta, by the way, fantastic. One of the documents that was used, as we discussed in, in past comments and videos, uh, one of the one of the documents that was used as the basis for, uh, basically uh, the uh, the um, Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, all that stuff, um, uh, for the United States. And, and Bill Wrights, I should have said. ...ruled by several Welsh princes, until 1216, when Llewellyn the Great became the ruler of the Principality of Wales. Right, the next this would be the case until Edward I, who conquered Wales in 1284, effectively becoming part of England. Okay. At the death of King Alexander III, Scotland was left with 14 rivals for succession. To prevent civil war, the Scottish magnates asked Edward I of England to elect a claimant. John Balliol was elected king, but was constantly undermined by Edward, who opposed Scottish independence. Edward decided to launch several campaigns to conquer Scotland and depose King John, to which he acquired the nickname Hammer of the Scots. Under a brave Scottish knight, William Wallace, the Scots mounted resistance against the English. Again, Americans know this as this person as Mel Gibson. Defeating them at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Edward marched north in person and defeated Wallace in battle, but Wallace managed to escape. Right. He was later captured and executed, but his efforts allowed Robert the Bruce to rise up and defeat the English, securing Scottish independence. I still don't know much about the, uh, the Robert the Bruce, William Wallace like feud. Uh, it seems more like class versus nobility and uh, the, against the English. Uh, the two of them had their own rivalry, but a common enemy. Or, or it was a tough alliance, I guess. But again, I don't know. So put it in the comments. Let me know how wrong I am. When the King of France died without an heir, Edward III was technically eligible to the crown through his mother. The French okay. court denied his claim and instead installed Philip of Valois. Edward paid homage to Philip as he owned the lands of Gascony and was essentially a vassal to the King of France. Due to disagreements, Edward reasserted his claim to the throne and invaded France beginning the Hundred Years' War. The English achieved notable victories at the Battle of Crecy, Poitiers and Agincourt thanks to the technical superiority so, of the longbow. Yeah. By the way, great invention, the longbow. Um, yeah, that's where we get the... Yeah, well, okay, that's the theory about where, we, where you guys that get that. Um... Yeah, I don't know how true it is. Uh, there, there was some debate before about whether it's a. Uh, that's just where it came from. I we always heard that, that was where this was from, uh, but um, okay. But was unable to conquer the French with the appearance of Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc, Noah's sister, who lifted the French spirit joke. and turned the tide of the war. Upon the death of Edward III, an entire generation was skipped in the line of succession, which prompted bitter rivalry between several claimants. Right, I remember Most that. Most notably were the Houses of York and Lancaster. Tensions were high until a bloody age of warfare erupted between these two factions in the Wars Lord of the Roses. Rose. It's so in-depth and complicated, this period will likely become a video of its own. The wars ended with the arrival of the Tudor dynasty, mm -hmm. Henry VIII wanting a divorce split with the church creating his own Church of England. This ultimately led to a series of religious differences between future English monarchs. In between his six wives and naval adventures, Henry gave Wales representation in Parliament and created the Kingdom of Ireland, but realistically he only controlled an area known as the Pale. In addition, Henry's paranoia and suspicion amounted to tens of thousands of executions, including his friends and wives. So my understanding about Henry VIII was, first of all, I didn't realize it was a total of six wives, so my bad. Um, my, the other understanding I had was that I guess when he was younger, before became, becoming extremely paranoid and killing everybody, that he was quite um, 
ef effective uh, and I don't want to say necessarily good, but good for good for uh, England because this is specifically England. Um, if am I wrong? I mean, I thought he did some some pretty decent things. The representation of Wales, yes, that's great. Um, it just seemed that I, I I recall in the past him having a more favorable view until you know creating the Church of England, all that fun stuff, uh, divorce. And, during the 16th century, the largest and most powerful empire was Spain, under King Philip II. England, under Elizabeth I, were helping Dutch rebels reject Spanish rule, and many English privateers were I'm also so intercepting Spanish silver on its journey back from the New World. Yeah. This angered the Spanish king, and the final straw came when Elizabeth had Mary Queen of Scots executed, because she did not want Scotland falling under Catholicism. The right. Spanish Armada, consisting of 130 ships, was deployed to invade England. At the Battle of Gravelines, an English victory forced the Spanish fleet to sail around the British Isles before storms in the north of Scotland destroyed the remaining ships. Oh, see, I always understood that the storm was first and everything else was second. The battle was second. Okay, it was the other way around. All right. Again, learning as I go. I should know this stuff, but... You know, this, that's the whole point of the channel. In retaliation, the English led by Sir Francis Drake amassed their own armada to invade Spain, but this too became a failed endeavor. Mm. Born in this period, William Shakespeare became a renowned poet, playwright, and actor who contributed significantly to English literature. When and, and he did when they were writing the, uh, my understanding at least, could be wrong. My knowledge mostly based on the professor and the madman was that a lot of the words that they were creating for the, I think it was the Oxford English Dictionary, they were tracing, came back to Shakespeare. And that's pretty much as far as they went because he was one of the first people, or or maybe the first prolific writers, I should say, to uh, put these words down on paper. So if you do make the, if you do trace the lineage of a word, a lot of them do go to Shakespeare. So, and, 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 suggest a meaning um again if i'm wrong comment away queen elizabeth of england died without an heir her closest male relative was james the sixth of scotland james was elected as king of england and scotland in a personal really? union that there is an issue although the that. countries remain separate political entities as the first monarch to rule the entire island of Great Britain, several assassination attempts were made by Catholic conspirators. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One such assassination attempt was the gunpowder plot by Guy Fawkes. Admittedly, I screwed this up in an earlier video. I do understand more about Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot. Who tried to blow up Parliament. Yeah. After a failed colony known as Roanoke, England established a successful colony known as James. The funny thing is, you guys was you guys uh, celebrate the fact that it wasn't blown up, and that he was that the, that the plot was um, uh, uncovered. If it were in the states, <laughs> half the people would be like, yeah, and the other half would be like, mm, I don't know. So the celebration, of course, in the states, if it were in the states, would be, well, I don't know, uh, not great. Town, which would eventually evolve into the thirteen colonies. At first, expeditions to the New World were mainly driven by religious motives, which were predominantly to convert the natives to their faith. But colonies became more profitable, as demand for New World crops like tobacco and sugar increased. British ships also made a monopoly on the transportation of captive African slaves that oh, crossed yeah. the Atlantic to the Americas. Millions of Africans were shipped in cramped, horrific conditions to work on brutal plantations in the Americas, and essentially became property to their masters. For 300 years, mm -hmm. this practice continued in the British Empire until it was fully abolished in 1833. Uh, something that that uh, Great Britain doesn't get a lot of credit for is the abolition of slavery. I mean, if you think of all the land holdings by, I think it was, it was 1833, it says 1603. I think it was 1833 though. Should have been 1833. Um, you're talking a whole whole segment of the world. I mean, it was like a, almost almost a quarter of the world, I think, that Great Britain controlled and the seas, and the and the trade there, and uh, they. It was not an easy task to abolish slavery. I mean that that's that's insane. 
Um, I mean, I realized that in, in weird ways it was, you know, unprofitable and it cost, you know, uh, it had a cost to it and it wasn't as uh, easy as people say, uh, in terms of having slaves. I mean, but anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's a real moral turn, uh, for, for an empire. And, um, it, we need to do a video on that in the future because a lot of Americans, for some reason, have no clue about slavery in the rest of the world. Blows my mind. Um, and they only think American Civil War, the best war in the, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but that's only in the States. This period also saw a wave of plantations in Ireland, where Irish lands were confiscated and given to English and Scottish settlers. Yeah. Tensions would rise between Charles I and Parliament. Following disagreements, conflicts between royal and parliamentary authority within England led to the English Civil War. The country became divided between parliamentarians, known as the Roundheads, and royalists, known as the Cavaliers. I didn't know Under they were the Roundheads. Under Cromwell and the New Model Army, the parliamentarians defeated Charles and executed him for treason. Right. Cromwell became Lord Protector and dissolved the monarchy. Yes. But shortly after his death, it was restored under Charles II. Charles II yes. married Catherine of Braganza, and when she arrived from Portugal, she introduced the greatest beverage of all time. Tea. Oh, I Tea had known. been used by China for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I forgot about that. And it also started... This This also, if I'm not mistaken, started the long-standing uh, relationship that Portugal and and Great Britain celebrate to this day. Um, it, it is something that you guys... Uh, I don't... The, the word does not flaunt. There's not a a, 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 a better... A better way of saying flaunt in a nice way, uh, but tout that would be the word, and and I think that's fantastic that you do celebrate things like that. Centuries, but its arrival in the 17th century captured the interest of the English aristocracy, and soon captivated every other Englishman. In 1685, <laughs> a Catholic James II became king in a largely Protestant nation. James's daughter Mary and her Dutch husband William were both Protestant and many nobles unhappy with the Catholic king invited William to become king. I didn't think William that found considerable that support when he invaded, and he was soon crowned King William III in what became known as the Glorious Revolution. Um... Although William's supporters dominated the government, there remained a significant following for James II in the I, okay, Scottish good. Islands. Clan MacDonald of Glencoe was one such group who had not been prompt in pledging allegiance to the new monarch. For this reason alone, 38 members of the clan were murdered in what became known as the Massacre of Glencoe. I've never heard of that before. After Scotland's failed colonial endeavours in Nova Scotia and Panama, and an economic crisis in the 1690s, there was a union between England and Scotland, forming the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And there it the is. The House of Stuart had ruled Britain for just over a century, but ended with the death of Queen Anne. Sophia of Hanover was the granddaughter of James I, and her son George became king. I'll be honest with you, it, this whole area of lineages, it's like gloss over. Uh, we're not taught this when we're taught world history. If you're, if our schools are luck, if you're lucky enough to get that far in school, you're taught world history. The last thing you end up really learning about are is like the lineage of who did what in Great Britain. It's more along the lines of let's talk about Italy now. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk about the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Let's talk about the German, the Germanic states. Let's talk about Southeast Asia. Let's talk about you know, and it's Europe as a whole. So you know, we generally don't get the uh, benefit of this kind of stuff like you do. Um, and again, we start with the learning the history of our country. So to me, this is interesting. I find it cool. Great Britain soon found itself drawn into several European wars, most notable being the War of the Spanish Succession and the Seven Years' War. Right. Victories in these wars resulted in territory for the empire, particularly in North America, although mm -hmm. it resulted in considerable debt. Yeah. In order to make up for this debt, King George III ordered heavy taxes be placed on the 13 colonies. This, among other reasons, culminated into the American War of Independence. And with financial help from France and Spain, the Americans were victorious. Yeah, it's a lot of these things, uh, a lot of this this time period, Americans think, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, again, I have the American point of view, so it, it, bear with me here. A lot of Americans are taught that 
uh, the the American Revolution, you know, was first of all uh, the basic people, uh, more basic or fundamental people who have a fundamental understanding or basic understanding think we did it all on our own. No, 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 no. We had help from the French, the Spanish, and at one point I had said that it was more along the lines of a world war more than anything. Last battle being fought in India of all places. And, um, you know, the more more people talk about it, the more it does become a world war in the sense of the known world, the, I don't know, quote, quote, civilized world is involved in it. And there are a number of them. It's not a world war as in World War One, where, you know, you better, everybody better get on board here and World War Two, same kind of thing. Um, but it's, it, it is one of, I think at least, uh, one of the, the first world wars that can be considered that. But that's just my take. Feel free to, you know, uh, go against me in the comments in a civilized manner. The East India Company, which was founded by Elizabeth I, had grown rapidly and even operated its own military and controlled mm -hmm. a sizable amount of territory. The company had set up fortified warehouses where they traded with many India rulers, acquiring important luxuries like textiles and spices. Right. One of the most important cities of all was Bengal, as it had a large taxable population. The governor of Bengal, Robert Clive, ordered that the population grow opium to export to China, instead of growing oh, yes. food as it proved to be a great source of income. And the opium wars. However, when a famine struck, it resulted in the deaths of millions of people. I think that's Meanwhile, Captain James Cook arrived at New Zealand and the southeast coast. All right, it's all a little out of step, but I get where they're going with it. The important, you've got to sometimes go back to go for it. All right, I see where we're going here. Australia. Although he wasn't the first to discover the area because of past Portuguese and Dutch explorers. Right. However, unlike the Dutch and Portuguese, Britain claimed it as their new penal colony, known as New South Wales, with the first convicts arriving in 1778. A new threat yeah. had emerged from France, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah. That's loud. I get Napoleon it. had come to dominate most of Europe, but Britain's advantage was that she was an island, and yep. the Royal Navy had become a major force at sea. Invasion of Britain was near impossible, and in a series of coalitions, Napoleon was defeated. By the end of the Napoleonic Wars, Britain was growing rapidly into a superpower based on their supremacy of naval engineering. How many coalitions were there? Six, I think? Uh, maybe help me remember? Furthermore, in Ireland, the Great Famine struck. Okay. A disease killing potato plants. Ireland, which had merged with Britain, relied heavily on this crop for food. But the British government forced Ireland to export what little food they had to other areas. Without any aid or food, Ireland's population plummeted by half due to starvation and emigration to countries like the United States. Yeah, it's important to note that um, you can read in a lot of diaries for those who could write, actually. Uh, they, they went right over to, uh, well, I shouldn't say right over, like, oh, they're up and leaving. But they went to the United States, generally in the northern states, and ended up fighting a lot. I mean, a lot of Irish fought heavily for uh for the north during the civil war but the uh the the tune if i'm not mistaken knickknack paddywhack give a dog a bone this little man came rolling home was about um uh british treat english specifically i guess treatment of the irish during the the famine uh basically saying they would rather rather give the food to a dog or, or the bones to a dog rather than an Irishman. It's very, um, it's a little unsettling, but then again, you know, I have to look at my own history before I judge. But, uh, yeah. Things weren't looking so great in India either, as India was rebelling against company rule. The East India Company had employed many Indian soldiers known as Sepoys, who were under the command of British soldiers. These Sepoys grew increasingly unhappy, and a revolt soon occurred yet it quickly failed due to a lack of unity between Indians. After the rebellion, the British government took direct control, with Queen Victoria being declared Empress of India. 
During the 19th century, the world was forever changed by the Industrial Revolution. Society yeah. was transformed by technological advances and increasing mechanisation and would launch Britain to global dominance. Some of the greatest innovations and inventions were the sewing machine, the fire extinguisher, steam-powered engines and turbines, the electric motor and photography. The telegraph was also a major invention as a message could now be sent from Britain to India in a matter of hours. The establishment of railways and trains also transformed transport forever. Instead of travelling days by horse and carriage, it now only took a matter of hours by train. Engineering and communication advances not only united the empire, they triggered a manufacturing boom like no other. People flocked from rural areas to city centres for jobs. Productivity reached an all-time high, but the consequences of mass migration resulted in extremely cramped and polluted cities. However, with these problems that were generated, it resulted in an improved sewage system. Yep, and there you go. A lot of, a lot of, you know, what is it? Uh, uh, something is the necessity of all invention. Um, I forget what it is, but uh, there were there was a lot that went on. I know we did a video a while back, which got a lot of interest. It was like the ten things or eight things that that America stole from the British. And the fact is, is that the, the the British had so many inventions, a lot of them, uh, yes, taken over by the Americans. Uh, a lot of them also uh, are inventions upon inventions upon inventions that didn't really quite do what they were hoping to do. And you add on a little bit more and someone else put their spin on it before you know it, poof, then you have a really good invention. Or you have a, an invention that is marketed like in the United States, which is when people hear about and use a specific thing, uh, they are marketed. Uh, they market it in a certain way with a company that says basically why you need this. And it's basically, you know, how things can be made better. And there was a lot of that in the States. So once everybody knows about it uh, or it's marketed as a thing that is touted and people start buying it, then you think, well, where are you buying it from? And the States were, were good at that. And, so they, they've grabbed a lot of inventions and marketed it. So whoever hears it first, it's the same reason we celebrate the fourth of uh, the Independence Day on July 4th. Everything was done on July 2nd. The Founding Fathers thought they'd celebrate July 2nd. Well, again, everyone in the, in the States heard about the signing you know, on the 4th. And so we celebrate the 4th. So... There's that. All right. I'm pretty much going to stop it here because we know what happens after this. And it's already long enough. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget, there are memberships and you can get access to some of the failed videos I do. And I just, I don't know. So I, it might be of an interest to some people. There is some merch. Don't forget to tell me if you like it, if you don't like it, you know, what I could do differently. Suggestions are always wonderful. We're doing really well with this channel. And I want to thank you very much because we are well over 2,000 subscribers and we really just started a push like 90 days ago so i hope you're all uh, enjoying this you seem to be and i appreciate it also just watch the comments in the comment section i appreciate if they're um just a little more careful uh all right guys talk to you later thank you